Well, here we are finally back out of the house. We're walking to the shuk of the old city of Akko, a really special place. Finally get back to making a video for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. Today we will see what I think is one of the most beautiful and picturesque cities in the entire state of Israel. Welcome to Akko, or I hear some people call it Accra. start this trip off today right here where the whole history of the city of Akko actually started. This is also the only spot in the entire city where you'll actually see where there's actually nothing here. Just some ruins, very few spots of ruins. Most of it's still underground, not excavated. This old city is over 5,000 years old and was heavily fortified. This was also one of, if not the oldest port city in the world. This, this was a Canaanite city, a Phoenician city, and many others. This place was always the key to enter the Galilee from the Mediterranean. In times of peace, this city was a city rich in trade and commercial activity, while in times of war, it was a strategical port to fend off attacking armies. Armies fought each other in this city from the days of the Bible, even way before the time of the Israelites, till the days up to Napoleon. In the first chapter of the book of Judges, Akko was mentioned. Let's read. In Judges 1 31, it says, Neither did Asher drive out the inhabitants of Akko, nor the inhabitants of Zidon, nor Achlab, nor Achzib, nor Chelba, nor of Afik, nor of Rehab. So we know the tribe of Asher tried and failed to drive out the Canaanites from this city. After their failure, this city, Akko, never was actually a Jewish city until 1948. Actually, the Jews that did live here before 1948 would actually bury their deceased outside miles inland from this city just to make sure that their loved ones would always be buried in the state of Israel. King Solomon made a deal with the king of Tyre where he gave claims to this area as part of their alliance. This was part of what made sure that this beautiful city of Akko was outside of the Jewish territory up until 1948. Akko was also mentioned in the book of Acts when Paul walked through the old city and visited the believers on his way to Tyre. Well, like I said, there's not very much to see here. It's, uh, it's not the beautiful part that we started off talking about how beautiful this city is. So let's go down and go to the other parts of the city and show you what there's to see. Now we're in the beautiful part of Akko. This is called the old city of Akko. That's funny because it'd be more accurate to say it's the new old city of Akko. This part of the city is only 2,300 years old. But in comparison where we started this video of 5,000 years of history, so this makes it the newer old city. As you can see, Akko is a peninsula in the Bay of Haifa, which protects it from outside forces trying to invade. This city has beautiful walls that come right out of the water. Looks like they come straight from the seabed. It's a wonderful, picturesque, beautiful thing to see, but it's also very good at protecting the port from uh, penetration from outside forces. Uh, do you see this line of the wall, of the stones? This was the once, in the past, the wall of the city. And the city was until there. And there was a tower, and they keep all the money, big treasures, there. Akko is one of the few places where there's not too many, but there's a few in the state of Israel where Arabs and Jews live together side by side, making this city to have its fair share of problems. This city has so much history that it's impossible to put it all in one video. As you walk around these old city, you can feel it in the air. It's really felt in the air, the history here that you're walking through. We will start right here in the most fortified part of the entire city. This is the most famous part of this city and it's the most amazingly preserved Crusaders castle, probably in the world, definitely here in Israel. What you actually see here above the, above the ground is the actual uh, building that the Turks built above the Crusaders castle during their time here. And the British used it later during the, the, Brit the British mandate time as a prison. The conquest of Akko by the Mamluks in 1291. 
As you can see, this place bears the scars of many wars. The small iron one is from the Napoleon attack and the larger stone one is from the Muslim attack on the walls of the Crusader castle in 1291. In this area, you can see everything was built out of sandstone, the material that's most readily available in this area. Unlike in Jerusalem where they had limestone. So Akko is brown from the sandstone and Jerusalem is white from the limestone. You can see now that we are inside the Crusader castle, that this is definitely European style as they were influenced from that era. We're inside the, uh, the old uh, Knights Templars uh, uh, Crusaders castle. This place is amazing. You can definitely tell how they were influenced with the uh, European style, the Gothic look here. Mm -hmm. It really is something beautiful in here. What you doing, Ola? I'm just sitting to rest a little bit. Oh. That's a big fortress. Queen Ola. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the North Hall, Joel. Wow, look at these ceilings. Huh? They must be wow. 70 feet tall. It's amazing, look at this. This definitely makes you feel so small. Yeah, this place is huge. You can see walking through this Crusader castle that is definitely, they were definitely influenced by the European Gothic era. They built everything large and impressive to project power and dominance over people. So the reference, look how big this place is. Look at me, look at the ceiling. It's huge. This castle was built in the 12th century and is very Romanesque and Gothic in appearance. They even found here the remains of a classic medieval dungeon with all the chains and torture chambers still there. In its time, this was a huge structure that was seen for miles around. This was only the first floor and they had two more floors above it. The Crusaders lost Arco when close to 200,000 Muslims attacked while the Crusaders had a force of only 14,000. After three months of hard battle, the Muslims finally had they been able to take over this place. As usual during that period, when the Muslims uh, conquered and took over a place, they spent all their effort and time in destroying everything that was here. So you still see out in the sea, sea walls that used to be that are not there anymore. Many things that we probably could have seen, but can't see today. The Mamelukes continued on doing this for many more other cities in, this, in the land of Israel as they conquered. Later, the Ottoman Empire took took this place and Akko and Jaffa, both of these places, and rebuilt them. This is because, as we know, the Ottoman Empire was a great naval forces. So the first two things they re rebuilt here in Israel was the two main ports, Jaffa and Akko. In World War I, the British turned in this place into a prison. The, the same castle we're talking about. There was a lot of abuse known to be taking place here. And also a lot of Jews were known to be held here in prison during the time of the rebirth of the state of Israel. In May, 1947, there was a famous prison break from here when the famous Irgun of Menachem Begin, if you remember the prime, or one of the prime ministers of the state of Israel, they smuggled explosives into the prison, setting explosives off from the inside and the outside of the big thick walls at the same time to be able to blow a huge hole through them and then be able to caused this great escape, allowing over 200 prisoners to escape. Probably some of the most exciting history to talk about in the, of the Akko is the history of the Knights Templar. Long after the time of Jesus, only about 800 years ago, during the time of the Knights Templar, they were in control here and lived here and had this place for all for about 200 years. Some even believe the Knights Templar were even appointed to uh, protect and move the Ark of the Covenant. And to go even further down into most popular belief is they, most people believe that they held the uh, Ark of the Covenant until safe until they sailed it out of the state of Israel uh, to keep it somewhere safe somewhere else. Okay, Joe, to another adventures. <laughs> Do you think they were small guys and girls? Because look, they have to be small person to just walk here. Well, looks like they got some water pumps here, pumping the water out. These, these tunnels must be getting flooded all the time. You can see water running under the decks. These tunnels are something else, huh? Yeah, it's amazing. This is where the Knights Templar are used for protecting the city and running their treasures underground and everything else. This is a, Really amazing stuff. You can see the the way they built the, yeah. the walls here. Lift me up, I want to check what's going on there. This was what I understand is something that the Knights Templar made where in these tunnels when the enemies would come try to attack them coming through these tunnels, it leads them down these pathways which all of a sudden opens up and allows the enemy to g gather in greater numbers. And they would sit up here in places like this and, and pick them off. Good know. strategy. Yeah, that's what I understand. From what I understood, what, 
from the st studying we've been doing. Look how much water we have on the sides. It's all flooded with water, huh? The amount of tunnels under this city is mind-blowing. There's probably more tunnels underground and more things underground than there is above ground. More than half of these tunnels have not even yet been excavated and mapped out yet. But it's not to say that all the interesting parts of this city is underground. Well, these are old city streets, they really are beautiful, huh? Yes, they Walking are. Walking down the same streets. Who knows how old everything really is here? Yeah. I have to be honest with you, this is my first time in Akko. I yeah. believe that. I live in Israel for 30 years and that's my first time and it's amazing. If you look out to sea, you can see what's left of an old Crusader's wall out at sea, that part of what was destroyed. As you can see, it's not just a wall out there. You can actually see floors right under the sea level. History tells us that during the night the Templars reigned here, they had a tower right on the sea wall on the eastern point of the city. History continues to tell us that in this tower is where they held their most important treasures. So if they did have the Ark of the Covenant and they did take it out of Israel to keep it safe somewhere unknown to us, then this would have been where they kept it until that point, until the departure from the state of Israel. Meaning this would have been the last physical place the Ark would have, have been in the state of Israel. The history of this place goes on and on. We could go on about all different things, but this is just a video we wanted to put together for you guys. First of all, it's been a while since we put a video together. And, uh, and this is really a beautiful place. Like I said, one of the most beautiful places, in my opinion, in the state of Israel. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. And we sure have enjoyed coming out here, doing it for you guys. So don't forget to join us on thegoldenreport.com. And until next time, God bless.